am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so here's the deal. It looks like the Camelot Caravan has taken off and everybody has jumped in a line behind her. So what I want to know now is on this debate, the one that's coming up, is Trump going to actually show up for the debate? How is he feeling ahead of time? Uh, how will Kamala do? And uh, whatever the other questions come to my mind, because I want to know, he has to be terrified about this debate. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Well, we're going to get started now. So here's the deal. I want to uh, tap into the energy around this debate, this debate that uh, I supposedly is going to happen with Trump and uh, Kamala. I love these cards, by the way. <clears throat> and as you may know, if you watch me at the end of the video, I'll uh, tell you more about these cards and where they come from. But they've got a great little uh, symbol on the bottom, a little devil, I guess a Baphomet. And, um, and then there's lots of secret extra things inside the cards for you to see or inside the box and so that's really uh, neat but anyway is this debate going to be what finishes off Trump I have to feel like it's not going to help uh, don't you <laughs> so uh, the debate uh, between Kamala and Trump I want to know uh, is he scared of going they say he's been practicing with Tulsi Gabbard as Kamala. So that's interesting. And um, I can't imagine that he'll be able to hold a candle to her in any way, shape, or form. I mean, if he tries to get ugly, I think she'll shut it down. He won't know his policy the way she knows her policy. And um, it'll, I just can't wait to see what it becomes. So. But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment of meditation, obviously. So, poor Donald <clears throat> and uh, debating Kamala. This is amazing. And her energy has just been through the roof. So, he can't compete with any of it. But I want to know for Donald, is he dreading that debate or is he looking forward to it? Uh, he tried to change it. So just three cards to kind of get into the groove with Donald. Is he looking forward to this or is he dreading it? And then we'll find out if he's actually going to go through with it. So three cards. Is he looking forward to it or is he dreading it? Oh my God. It's a nightmare. Nine of swords, truth, justice, rules, and law all coming down on him. It's a complete nightmare. <clears throat> the three of pentacles. Well, that's what this is all about, building something for public display. Uh, pinnacles are a value or worth or sometimes money, but this is going to be, oh, this is interesting. You know, everything that he does is about getting people to loan him more, or to send him, to give him their money. So doing this is all about building a public display. Huh. And then the final card is the Hierophant government card what does it mean it's all highly related to what we're talking about so the nine of swords i want to know what i want to know about his anticipation for this and it's telling me that this is a nightmare he's literally having nightmares about it he has tried to make his focus on that this is necessary to get more money okay the government card ending up with the government card I don't know. I mean, it's all about 
being the president. That's the only thing. Let me just take one more card just to see if it makes that any clearer. And that's a two of wands making a choice. Oh, okay. Two of wands is short is not making a choice, but two of wands is short term plans. But it reads a bit to me more like making a choice. So I guess this is significant in that it's the for the highest. It's a debate for the highest office in the land. Some might say in the world. Um, in short term plan. So he's trying to get through his short term planning to get through this debate. I think um, it's less. Uh, I think it's more than he's dreading it. And um, but it's a necessary evil that he knows now he's got to go through it. So will Donald Trump go through with the debate? Will he show up for the debate? Will he be on the stage with Kamala? Will he be on the stage with Kamala? Let's see. Will Donald Trump actually be on the stage for this debate with Kamala? Three cards. One, two, three. Three cards. Will he actually be on the stage with her? Interesting. If he doesn't, she'll just make it a commercial. Seven of Wands. So the Seven of Wands is, um, you know, really fighting everything off. You only have one action in your hand. This is still about him. Um, he'll be there. As clumsy as it will be, he'll be there. It's a disaster. The tower card. And a broken heart. He's going to fail miserably. Wow. But he'll be there. So Kamala. Kamala. What about you, Kamala? Are you looking forward to this debate? Kamala Harris, are you looking forward to this debate, Kamala Harris? What do you think about this debate, Kamala Harris? Three cards. One. Two, three cards for Kamala Harris. What does she think about this debate? Actually, we've got four. Good. Okay, this is uh, unfortunately being chained to the devil. King of Wands. So get your plans perfect. Six of Pentacles, okay, having to measure out the value. And the Seven of Swords is theft and betrayal. So Kamala, what do you think about this? Well, I think, usually the devil card, you're talking about being tied to lesser intention. But, even, but it couldn't be clear to me that the devil card, this is like being tied on the stage with the devil, okay? So the King of Wands is the only thing you can do is really have your plans honed to perfection, okay? Um, which is what she did as a prosecutor. The Six of Pentacles is weighing out that value perfectly. Ah, now it makes sense. And then the Seven of Swords, this abuse of power, it's all about truth, justice, rules, and law, and someone stealing away with most of them and leaving a couple things uh, behind. I think she may be leaving a trap behind uh, for him somehow. If she can question him in such a way on that stage and somehow get a, a, a response from him, maybe she realizes this may be the opportunity for her to say, him to say something publicly that will skewer him uh, in his uh, other legal uh, problems. Is that possible? So she knows what she's up against and she's preparing for it. Okay. Is Kamala going to win the debate? The cards already told us that he's not going to win the debate. But let's see what they say about Kamala. One, two, Three. Is Kamala going to win this debate? 
Five of Cups. So Cups are emotion, uh, heartfelt situations. The Five of Cups is having to leave something behind, okay, and keep on going. Realizing you may have spent some of your emotional uh, reserve, but you've got some left over to keep on going. And this person is looking in the rearview mirror. Ten of Pentacles is, okay, it's going to be a money bonanza for Kamala. This um, is going to be a money bonanza for Kamala. And then the Page of Wands, okay, getting those plans queued up again for the next issue. Yeah. Okay. I want to do a dyadic cross on uh, the influence this will have on the rest of Kamala's, um, or at least the next leg of her campaign, because we've only got 74, 73 days or so. So I need six cards for the dyadic cross, six cards, which is the first part of a uh, Celtic cross. And I don't think we'll go to a Celtic cross. This will only be a dyadic cross. I want to know what the cards can tell us about how this debate is going to affect the rest of her campaign. The signifier card is the Page of Cups. Okay, so this is the beginning of some emotional value that she may be having to a lot of people who are not that familiar with her. And it's challenged by this Eight of Cups having to leave so much behind. What is she leaving behind? I don't know, but it's a lot of emotional value that she's having to leave behind. She's really having to spend up her emotional reserve every every step of the way. The basis of all of this is the Four of Swords. It's words of truth, justice, rules, and law. But this is being careful not to move uh, uh, uncautiously because you could be damaged by some of these um, rules that are sticking down. And in the past of this for her, with this King of Pentacles, okay, she's coming into it with all the value that you can muster. In the sky of this for her, as far as this is going to, how this debate is going to affect her um, campaign is secrets being revealed. And I think this has to be some truths being revealed about Trump. And in the uh, likely outcome of this, oh, the devil, the devil is being chained to lesser intention. We, we can't stop there. So we've got to get uh, at least one more card. The high priestess being divinely led. So yeah, she is is dealing with the devil every step of the way, but she has divine guidance. This is definitely going to be a money maker for her campaign. So she starts out in this. The signifier of this is that she just has the value, the emotional value of a page after using up all of the emotional. You know, it's an emotional thing to be campaigning about this man every day. Being cautious is the baseline of everything, and she came into it rich with value. Uh, getting the secrets out there is the aim of this. Dealing with the devil is the likely outcome, but thank goodness she is governed by the high priestess with some divine intervention. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, deck that I have now called Mystical Medleys, a vintage cartoon tarot. This is such a cool deck, and I've had it for a little while. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's absolutely new, but I've had it for maybe a couple, three weeks practicing with it. And uh, the box is amazing. It's a good, sturdy box. You'd expect uh, you got a nice uh, perfume, uh, perhaps, in a box like this. And this uh, is artwork by Gary Hall. And uh, this is uh, published, I presume, or distributed at least, by Sterling Ethos out of New York. Okay, very interesting minute. What happens is this box opens from the bottom. Okay, so you flip this open and then you have this uh, creature right here, which I've forgotten the name, but I'll see it in a minute because I'm going to look at the guidebook and tell you about it and then bring up the example of it on my phone. But uh, so this is how you open the box from the bottom. That opens down. This slides out. And then now what you have is this inner uh, case with a very faint kind of watermark of this uh, animal on the front. If you look inside the case, and I hope you can see it, uh, inside there is a little uh, star, which for me is temperance. 
Okay, or it could be the star card itself. It's got two cups, a cup in each hand, which is typical of the star card, finding that balance. And uh, so that's, I love it when they've gone to the trouble to include some little secret uh, treasure for you inside the box. Now, inside here, if you take these cards out, inside this box, we have the sun. Okay, so the sun card. I hope you can see that too. Okay, and there's a little watermark on this side. There's none on the other side, and I'll show you why that's important. The other thing that comes with this card, or this deck, are two extra cards, Sad Squirrel and Happy Squirrel for divination. And the guidebook tells you how you would divine those, and uh, that brings us to uh, the guidebook. So again, this little creature is a very beautifully done kind of book. And um, so if you gave this as a gift, or if you were getting it as a gift, you'd feel very uh, glad uh, that you got it. And it has a nice introduction here, which is speaking to um, Gary's um, um, inspirations uh, to coming uh, into this uh uh, and it starts out like so many good stories. It all started with the devil. And that's what that uh, uh, animal uh, signifies here. Um, I've always been fascinated by magic, the cult, and the imagery of the tarot. I own several decks from the fully usable traditional ones to more modernistic, uh, modern artistic ones. And have always dreamed of creating my own in some way. Now, I want to find the name of this little devil here. And uh, so it's going to take me just a minute to read through this. Uh, because, gosh, I can't remember. Baphomet. Okay, so the creature that we're looking at then is uh, the Baphomet. That's what this guy is. So if you put these together right here, you see that is the cartoonish uh, depiction of a Baphomet. And let me show you what a Baphomet is. Let's say define uh, Baphomet. And we'll get a picture here. So this is the Baphomet. And this is a, a deity that supposedly the um, the Knights of the Templar would have, um, I don't want to say worshipped, but as, had an occultic interest in. And so the first card that Gary Hall created was that uh, Baphomet. And then from that, the rest sprung. So let's see, how am I going to do the rest of this? Yeah. Um, now, the cards themselves are a good way. They're uh, easy to use. They fit well in your hand. But the fantastic thing is how beautiful these cards are. This artist, Gary Hall, has a kind of ropey uh, quality to his art, kind of a, uh, a rubber hose kind of a, an effect. If you look at like the arms and uh and so that's his uh, style. And, um, and so the cards are very interesting. It took a little bit of uh, studying them before I felt comfortable using them for divination. Okay. And there's no reason because they do pretty easily, uh, they're pretty recognizable as the Rider Waite system. But still, for whatever reason, I, maybe I was just so distracted by the artwork. Um, I spread the cards out like this so that uh, if you don't get to see a lot of cards, then at least you've seen them here. And uh, you can decide. Uh, if these are cards that you like and would like to use. I was always curious to see more than just a few cards that a reader would uh, pull out during the presentation. So there we go.